As theory would have it, the next true endgame of Don't Starve Together is coming, everyone. The war has finally begun. Three celestial altars stand at the ready to spawn something in, and a mysterious energy lingers. The moon beckons. I couldn't tell you what all this will amount to, nor when it will actually happen. But I can make sure that we're all ready for when it does. So then, let us discuss how to go about finding and constructing these places of power, shall we? And the first part is a bit of a conundrum, folks. It's both the easiest bit and not, because we kind of have to find the lunar island at some point. And knowing the direction of said island from the mainland used to actually be way easier than it is now. However, I still always just trust the edges that look more like a potential missing puzzle piece. Moreover, just the jagged angles that we usually find. So, ironically, although the altar itself is by far the easiest to construct, it may actually be the most annoying to find. Whatever the case, once you do set foot on these celestial beaches, you'll want to head to the celestial mines to find these things called inviting formations. There are three of them, each containing a piece of the Celestial Altar. And do note how our characters will actually react as they go about mining them. It's like they're being called to do so. And obviously, the Celestial Altar base comes first. But next comes the Celestial Altar Orb, also found somewhere within the Lunar Mines, so keep an eye out as you're roaming about. Oh, and yes, we're going to be doing plenty of back-breaking work along the way today, so be ready for that. But finally, the Celestial Altar Idol. Find this third and last inviting formation. Give it a nice picking. Note how all three have separate examinations per character, which can be quite intriguing. And then proceed to take seven years to bring it all three together to complete the very first ever Celestial Altar of Don't Starve Together. Some spooky noises will play, whispering can be heard if nearby, and the Celestial Tab will now be available to you. It's all fine and dandy, but word of warning now, you may want to find a place on the island with at least three Celestial Fissures close by to one another before completing any of these altars. Trust me, you'll thank me later. But already on to altar number two then. The Celestial Tribute. This one, though, is far more involved, so buckle up, folks. And step one is locating Pearl and Pearl's Island, which, thankfully, is really easy to accomplish, actually. Just simply set sail at any point from pretty much anywhere, and you will easily stumble upon a message in a bottle on your travels eventually. Read it, and you will literally be told where the island is, so that's good stuff. However, now comes that involved bit. Pearl's Friendship Quest. For those who don't know, certain tasks done for the Krabby Hermit and on her island slowly turn her, well, less Krabby, and more into Pearl. And we can just move up on the friendship list over and over and over again, eventually leading to a very important item, Pearl's Pearl. Without this, the entire thing is dead in the water. So, you best know what to do, and when, and how to go about it, so I would watch this video here. Cause even that is but step one I'm afraid folks, and this is why we're gonna keep things basic today, otherwise we'd be here forever. For you see, nothing can be done with Pearl's Pearl without having found her long lost husband, the Crab King. And the problem here is that the Crab King can unfortunately spawn any bloody where he bloody well chooses. And unlike Pearl, cannot actually be found via messages in a bottle or anything like that. And really, I honestly believe that should be changed. But sorry folks, I truly cannot help you with this one. You just gotta set sail and pray that you find him eventually. And when you do, 
Be well bloody sure to socket Pearl's Pearl before socketing the other gems to begin the fight, or else your ultimate prize is gonna be lost. One of these days, I'll get further into the Crab King boss fight. But for now, I advised most out there to first socket Pearl's Pearl, obviously, and then use purple gems to finish it out. Why? Well, because it's arguably the easiest set of conditions for the fight overall. And what I mean by that is, socketing different gems leads to the Crab King having different attributes for the fight. From more healing to just insane amounts of health, you can choose to make the fight incredibly difficult or just kind of tame him a little bit. And obviously, I know which one I'll be choosing when the time comes. And here's my honest truth, folks. I greatly dislike the Crab King as a boss in general, even though I love the idea of the gems adding different aspects to it. But he's just a seafaring based toadstool knockoff and just worse in every way. And I also greatly dislike how they have chosen to lock the lunar continent behind him when he really doesn't have anything to do with it. But whatever the case, I do the purple gems simply because you can cancel his geyser attacks anyways, so any of the actual attributes given by the gems are just negated. So there you go. I also will just never mind cheesing the whole thing anyways to get what we need now. So perhaps the Bunnyman method will be making a comeback soon. But what exactly is all this for and what do we need now? Well, that would be the inactive celestial tribute, everyone. The Crab King drops plenty of loot, but a Crab King with a pearls pearl socketed leaves behind something very big in the water that we need to fish up and the only way to do so is with using a pinching winch a structure gotten via trading with pearl come level one friendship which you'll obviously have well before you're doing this fight anyways but the celestial tribute is now ours and with that i think you know what comes next you gotta sail it all the way back to the lunar island break your back once more socket it within a fissure that is very hopefully close to the first altar and once again enjoy access to the celestial tab for your troubles two down one to go and please do not be fooled by this guide folks all of this is going to be taking quite some time to accomplish i'm merely here to give you the basics oh and the knowledge, the forgotten knowledge. The last altar pieces are locked behind quite the set of new tasks that will almost all be taking place down here in the new biome, the Ancient Archives. And as we know, the new Lunar Grotto biome will always be connected to our blue mushroom ones, while the Ancient Archives will directly follow all that. So get to it, or you know, at least one is not in beta anymore. But maybe not actually. While the ancient orchestrina here is indeed what we'll be needing to progress once this update is fully out, it and the rest of the ancient archives won't actually be ready to roll upon your initial arrival. We are going to be needing to turn it on ourselves. And to do so, we will be needing a third and final iridescent gem from the Moonstone event in order to socket the last ornate pedestal found in the archives. So this means that the earliest anyone can even potentially rush to this last altar is day 11. But that would require you to have found the Moonstone, found the ruins, have crafted all the needed staffs, set up the Moonstone Arena, and much more by day 11. And I really don't see that happening, no matter who you are. But whatever the case, be it day 11, 31, or beyond, and yet another full moon night, this Moonstone event must be completed regardless. Oh, and once it is done, you can then proceed to deconstruct the Mooncaller Staff for that very iridescent gem that we bloody did all this for, mind you. And then proceed to head back down into the archives, socket that final gem, activate the archives, begin the war, and finally have a chance to work towards our ultimate goal. Forgotten 
knowledge. Specifically, the Astral Detector. These fountains of knowledge offer us distilled knowledge, things that must be placed in the center of the ancient orchestrina in order to be of potential use. And the colors of the water dictate the craft gain upon completing the orchestrina puzzle. Yellow for the terra firma tamper, red for collected dust, and blue for the astral detector. But what is this structure's true purpose if it's not crashing your game? Well, it's there to help us locate the final two pieces of the final celestial altar, the ancient moon altar. Place the detector down anywhere on the surface, and it will literally point you in a direction towards a very specific spot. And do keep in mind that it only has 10 uses, so don't spam it. But eventually, it will pinpoint a location for you. So place it down one last time, and the machine will hopefully drill into the ground and eventually pull up a piece of said altar. Now, You'll be needing two separate pieces, mind you, so chances are you'll need more than one astral detector, as the pieces themselves can actually spawn anywhere on the map. And only then, once that is all said and done, we can head back to the Lunar Island, to your group of fissures, and potentially two other altars, to complete the final one. And if all three are close enough, the mysterious energy will appear, and the altars will remain active forever. Plus, there is some eerie ambiance going on when you're nearby. But well done. After all of that, folks, you're ready for what very well could be the final phase of Don't Starve Together. Then again, we don't actually know that for sure. I'm just being a little dramatic. We honestly know nothing, and that's great. But what I do know is that these three altars are obviously the pivotal mechanics behind what is coming. So, I just simply wanted to give you a heads up on how to go about getting each one. So I do hope this helps you folks. Thanks for watching, well wishes to all, be prepared for what's coming, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.